viewers, many a times we need to know whether a particular thing is more or less, big or small, good or bad. So, what do we do? We compare it with another thing which is of the same kind. Can we compare the price of a car to that of the length of a room? No, we cannot. We can compare two quantities only if they are of the same kind. This is called ratio. So, what is ratio? Ratio is the comparison by division of two quantities which are of the same kind. For example, if the price of a car is rupees 2 lakhs and the price of a television set is rupees 16,000, then the ratio of the price of the car to that of the price of the television set will be 2 lakhs upon 16,000, which is equal to 25 upon 2. This can also be written as 25 is to 2. This is the ratio in its smallest form. How can we compare two ratios? Let us see. Let us compare the ratios 3 upon 5 and 7 upon 8. We know that the LCM of the denominators 5 and 8 is 40. Therefore, 3 upon 5 becomes 3 upon 5 multiplied by 8 and the denominator is also multiplied by 8 and we get 24 upon 40 and 7 upon 8 becomes 7 upon 8. The numerator is now multiplied by 5 and the denominator is also multiplied by 5. Result is 35 upon 40. Now that the denominator is same, we can compare the numerator and by comparing these two we find that 35 upon 40 is more than 24 upon 40. That shows that the ratio 7 upon 8 is more than the ratio of 3 upon 5. We can also compare two ratios by equating their first terms that is the numerators. Let us no now learn about a few properties of ratios. Sometimes we are given two or more than two ratios and we have to find out their compounded ratios. So, what do we do? We multiply these ratios term wise. For example, suppose we are given these ratios 2 is to 3, 4 is to 5 and 5 is to 7. We have to find out the compounded ratio of these three ratios. So, we multiply these ratios term wise. The compounded ratio of these three ratios will be 2 into 4 into 5, 2 into 4 into 5 is to 3 into 5 into 7. That means, we are multiplying the first terms that is becoming the first term of the compounded ratio and we are multiplying the second terms which becomes the second term of the compounded ratio and we get the result as 40 is to 10505. The compounded ratio of two equal ratios is called duplicate ratio and the compounded ratio of three equal ratios is called triplicate ratio. For example, the duplicate ratio of these two equal ratios will be 7 into 7 is to 8 into 8, which is 49 is to 64. And the triplicate ratio of 3 equal ratios, for example, 5 is to 6, 5 is to 6, 5 is to 6 is given by 5 into 5 into 5 is to 6 into 6 into 6 that is 125 is to 216. 
On the other hand, for a given ratio A is to B, its sub duplicate ratio is defined as square root of A is to square root of B and sub triplicate ratio is defined as cube root of A is to cube root of B. For example, a given ratio 49 is to 81, its sub duplicate ratio will be square root of 49 is to square root of 81 which is equal to 7 is to 9 and for this given ratio 27 is to 64 its sub triplicate ratio is defined as cube root of 27 is to cube root of 64 which is 3 is to Can you tell what will be the reciprocal ratio of a given ratio A is to B? Its reciprocal will be 1 upon A is to 1 upon B, which is nothing but 1 upon A divided by 1 upon B, which is equal to B upon A. In ratio form, we write it as B is to A. So, we find that, that the reciprocal of the ratio A is to B is the ratio B is to A. Now, using these results, let us solve this problem. If A is to B with A not equal to B is the duplicate ratio of A plus C is to B plus C, show that C square is equal to A into B. If A is to B is the duplicate ratio of A plus C is to B plus C, then obviously A plus C whole square upon B plus C whole square will be equal to A upon B. This implies, now opening these brackets we get a square plus 2 a c plus c square upon b square plus 2 b c plus c square again is equal to a upon b. Now, cross multiplying that is taking b to this side and this expression to the right hand side, what do we get? We get a square b plus 2 a b c plus b c square and this is equal to a b square plus 2 a b c plus a c square. Now, bringing this these terms to the left hand side, we get a square b plus 2 a b c plus b c square minus a b square minus 2 a b c minus a c square is equal to 0. Cancelling plus 2 a b c and minus 2 a b c, we are left with a square b minus a b square plus b c square minus a c square is equal to 0. This gives us taking a b common from these two terms, we get a b into a minus b and from these two terms, we if we take minus c square common, we get minus c square into again a minus b. This is equal to 0. This implies that a b into a minus b 
is equal to taking this term to the right hand side we get c square into a minus b cancelling out a minus b from both the sides we are left with c square is equal to a into b which was the needed result. Many a times we need to equate one ratio with another. For example, we are equating the ratio a is to b with the ratio c is to d. In such cases, these terms a, b, c and d are said to be in proportion. This can also be written as A is to B as C is to D and is read as A is to B as C is to D. The terms A and D are called extremes and the terms B and C are called means. D is also called fourth proportion to A, B and C. When can you say that three or more than three terms are in continued proportion? When the ratio of the first to that of the second is equal to the ratio of the second to that of the third and so on. For example, these three terms A, B and C are said to be in continued proportion if A is to B is equal to B is to C. In other words, it gives us B square is equal to AC that is the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means. B is said to be mean proportional to A and C in such case and C is called the third proportional to A and B. Using these results, let us solve these problems. What must be added to 6, 10, 14 and 22 so that they become proportional? Let us suppose that we add x to these four terms that is 6, 10, 14 and 22 so that they become proportional. So, we get 6 plus x upon 10 plus x is equal to 14 plus x upon 22 plus x. Cross multiplying or taking this factor to the left hand side and this factor to the right hand side, we get 6 plus x into 22 plus x is equal to 14 plus x into 10 plus x. Opening these brackets, we get 132 plus 28 x plus x square is equal to 140 plus 24 x plus x square. Solving this, we get 4 x minus 8 is equal to 0 because x square and x square gets cancelled from both sides and we take these terms to the right hand side, we get 4 x minus 8 is equal to 0 which gives us x is equal to 2. Thus, we get the value of x as 2. So, if 2 is added to these 4 terms that is 6, 10, 14 and 22, then they become in proportion. Let us take another problem. Find 2 numbers such that their mean proportional is 24 and the third proportional is 1536. Let us suppose that the 2 numbers be x and y. We are given that their mean proportion is 24. So, that means that x upon 24 is equal to 24 upon y, which gives us x is equal to 576 upon y. 
let us mark this equation as number 1. We are also given that the third proportional to x and y is 1536. That gives us the equation x upon y is equal to y upon 1536. This implies that y square is equal to 1536 into x, but we know that the value of x is 576 upon y. So, replacing this x by this value, let us see what do we get? We get y square is equal to 1536 into 576 upon y. Now, taking this y to the left hand side, we get y cube is equal to 1536 into 576, which implies that y is equal to cube root of 1536 into 576. Solving this, we get the value of y as 96. Now, if the value of y is 96, substituting the value here, we get the value of x as 576 upon 96 that is equal to 6. So, let us write here from equation 1, we get the value of x is 576 upon 96 which is equal to 6. Let us now learn about a few useful results on proportion. Result 1 is if A is to B as C is to D, then B is to A as D is to C. That is, if A upon B is equal to C upon D, then B upon A is equal to D upon C. This result is called invertendo. Result 2 is if A is to B as C is to D, then A is to C as B is to D. That is, if A upon B is equal to C upon D, then A upon C is equal to B upon D. That is, we can interchange the means. This result is called alternando. Result 3 is, if A is to B as C is to D, then A plus B is to B as C plus D is to D. That is, if A upon B is equal to C upon D, then if we add 1 to both sides, we get A upon B plus 1 is equal to C upon D plus 1. The value remains same because we are adding 1 to both the sides and thus we get A plus B upon B is equal to C plus D upon D. That is, A plus B is to B as C plus D is to D. This result is called componendo. Result 4 is, if A is to B as C is to D, then A minus B is to B as C minus D is to D. That is, if A upon B is equal to C upon D, then if we subtract 1 from both the sides, the value of this expression remains same on both the sides, but now the expression becomes A minus B upon B is equal to C minus D upon D or A minus B is to B as C minus D up is to D. This result is called dividendo. Result 5 is using result 3 and 4. This result says that if A is to B as C is to D, then A plus B is to A minus B as C plus D is to C minus D. That is, if a upon B is equal to C upon D, then from result 3, we get A plus B is to B as C 
plus d is to d and result 4 says a minus b is to b as c minus d is to d. Dividing result 3 by result 4, we get a plus b upon b upon a minus b upon b is equal to c plus d upon d upon c minus d upon d. This gives us a plus b upon a minus b is equal to c plus d upon c minus d or a plus b is to a minus b as c plus d is to c minus d. This result is called componendo and dividendo as it is using both the results componendo and dividendo. Let us now solve a problem using these results. The problem is if x is equal to 2 a b upon a plus b, a not equal to b, find the value of x plus a upon x minus a plus x plus b upon x minus b. Now, here we are given that x is equal to 2 a b upon a plus b. This implies if we take a here in the denominator of x, we get x upon a is equal to 2 b upon a plus b. Now, using componendo and dividendo property on this expression, we get x plus a upon x minus a is equal to 2 b plus a plus b upon 2 b minus a plus b. This gives us x plus a upon x minus a is equal to 3 b plus a upon b minus a. Let us put this equation as equation number 1. Again, we again use the same expression x is equal to 2 a b upon a plus b. Now, this time if we take this b to the denominator of x, we get x upon b is equal to 2 a upon a plus b. Again using the property of componendo and dividendo on this expression, we get x plus b upon x minus b is equal to 2 a into 2 a plus a plus b upon 2 a minus a plus b. This gives us x plus b upon x minus b as 3 a plus b upon a minus b. Let us put this equation as equation number 2. We have to find out the value of x plus a upon x minus a plus x plus b upon x minus b. That is, we have to find out the sum of the equations number 1 and 2. x plus a upon x minus a plus x plus b upon x minus b. This is equal to from equation number 1 as you can see the value of x plus a upon x minus a is 3 b plus a upon b minus a. So, let us write this 3 b plus a upon b minus a plus from equation number 2 we have the value of x plus b upon x minus b as 3 a plus b upon a minus b. So, let us write this value 3 a plus b upon a minus b. Taking common denominator as b minus a, 
the expression becomes 3 b plus a minus 3 a minus b, because this was a minus b. So, if I make this as b minus a, then this positive sign changes to negative sign that makes this as minus 3 a and this as minus b. Solving this, we get x plus a upon x minus a plus x plus b upon x minus b is equal to 2 b minus 2 a upon b minus a. Now, from these two terms in the numerator, we can take out two common. So, we have 2 into b minus a upon the denominator as b minus a. The numerator and the denominator gets cancelled because they are same. So, we have the value of x plus a upon x minus a plus x plus b upon x minus b as equal to 2. Now, we hope you will be able to solve a lot more problems on ratio and proportion after this lesson. Thank you for being with us.